Hello, warm welcome to all of you. Myself, Dr. Subodh Kumar Jha, Associate Professor, Department of English, Magad University, Bihar. Today's topic is advanced writing activities. And in advanced writing activities, today we shall talk about letter writing. I am sure many of you have written letter on one occasion or the other. And as teacher, you are supposed to help your learners write letters. The first thing that we need to know is why letter writing? Why we need to write letters? Before the age of telephone, the, before mobiles became popular and you started sending SMS, email, etc. Later writing was the most important form of communication. And it is believed to be a higher form of writing. It is taught in schools for the development of expression, creativity, and communicative ability. These are the three objectives we keep in mind while teaching later or while helping our students write a letter. Now, we must know what are the features of a letter. Traditionally, a letter is written to convey messages to people living at a distance. Letter writing is different from other sorts of writing, say, essays. Unlike essays, letters have a very specific communicative purpose. A letter does not require the elaboration of points as required in essays. It has to be brief and very concise. It also requires certain skill in writing to communicate. Style of writing is also very important. And this style varies according to the writer's relationship with the recipient. Who is to receive the letter? And who is writing the letter? The relation between the two decides what sort of style is to be followed. The writer also needs to understand how the recipient will react to the content of their message. For example, if you are writing uh, a letter to your friend and you are being very formal, the friend is not going to like it very much. Similarly, if you write something very intimate while writing a letter to an officer, surely that officer is not going to be pleased. So we have to be careful. We also need to know different types of letters. There are two broad categories. One is informal and the other is formal. Informal letters include personal letters. And these letters are written to friends or relatives. So the letters written to our friends or relatives, they come under the category of personal letter or informal letter. Formal letter includes business letters, official letters, letters to editors, letters of complaint, applications including job applications, invitation, etc. We can say all other letters other than the letters written to friends or relatives, they come under formal letters. Now, when we are to write letters, we have to follow certain format, keeping in mind what sort of letter we are going to write, if it is an informal letter or it is a formal letter. The format is 
the first thing that we need to write, whether it is informal or formal, is the address of the writer or the sender. But there is difference in writing the address of the writer. If it is an informal letter, then just the mention of the place is enough. No need to write elaborate address. Just write Patna, Delhi, Noida, and it's enough. But if you are writing a formal letter, merely mentioning the name of the place is not enough. You have to give complete address, flat number or house number, road number, every detail has to be included. That is the basic difference between an informal letter and a formal letter. After the address, we have to write the date of writing the letter. Well, the dates are mentioned in both the formats, formal and informal. The difference is that in the informal letter, you can even write so, uh, if uh, the date, actual date, suppose it is 23rd of August, you can write 28 slash 08 slash 17. That is enough. But if it is formal letter, we need to write completely 23rd August 2017 or whatever the date is. Of course, there are variations. We may write August 23 comma 2017. So different variations are possible in formal letter, but in informal letter, we have to be very informal in writing the date, either the numerics or just the date, month or year. Then the next item is subject. What is the subject of the letter? But this is not required in informal letter. We don't write the subject of the letter. But in formal letter, this is very important. We need to write in brief the topic of the letter. What is the letter about? The next item is salutation. Here also, we need to understand the specific format. If, uh, what is the letter? It is informal or formal. In informal, we have varieties of options. We can write dear, we can write dearest, we can write my dear, we can write uh, uh, sweetest, any term of endearment will do here. But while writing a formal letter, we don't have much liberty. We have only two or three options. One is we can just write sir, or we can write dear sir, or if we are addressing the person by surname, we can write dear Professor Sinha, dear Dr. Prasad, well, this way we can write. So only three variations are possible in formal letter. But in informal letter, salutation can be as varied as possible. After salutation, we write the body of the letter. And this is also different in the two forms of letters, personal, I mean informal and formal. I will come to it later. Then we write closing compliments, how you are ending the letter. In informal letter, again, there are choices, there are options. You can write yours sincerely, you can write yours affectionately. You can write your loving son, your loving daughter, your uh, loving friend, and so on. But in formal letter, we have only two options. One is yours faithfully, and another is yours sincerely. 
Again, we have to keep in mind when to write yours faithfully and when to write yours sincerely. If we are addressing sir, I mean in salutation we have mentioned sir, then closing com uh, compliment will be yours faithfully. If we have written dear Dr. Sinha or so on, then here we need to write yours sincerely. So two options are possible in formal letter. And after that, the name of the writer is written, name or, and, and or signature. Again, it varies. In informal letter, just the name of the writer is enough, the first name. When I say just name, this means first name. Or even the nickname will do, Chotu, Motu, Papu, whatever the nickname is. But in formal letter, we need to write full name with surname. And if necessary, we, we also need to put our signature. Signature is not required in informal letter. Just write nickname or first name. That's all. Then the last item is enclosure. In informal letter, no enclosure is required. But in formal letter, we have to mention, if need be, the enclosures. If you are attaching some documents, then we need to mention how many items we are enclosing with the letter. And that is given uh, towards the end. There is also a confusion with regards to the format of writing, with regards to combination, whether all the items should be written on only the left hand side or there should be left right combination. Traditionally, we used to write letters using left right combination. For example, in a traditional letter, we need to write the address and the and date towards right side. And on the left hand side, well, the address of the receiver, if uh, formal letter, subject, formal letter, this is left hand side, everything left hand side, but again closing compl complement uh, on the right hand side. This is called left right combination. But nowadays, uh, Another format is being popular, that is all on the left hand side, everything on the left hand side. The choice is yours. You can choose any combination, all, all left or right and left combination. But modern way of writing is all left. So better to follow the modern trend. After the format, we need to understand the style of writing. And that is what is written in the body. The body of later uses specific style. And while we are using a specific style, we have to keep in mind the specific format of the later. In informal later, we can be very conversational, very colloquial, very chatty. So intimate terms are used. That means informal variety of words, informal sentence patterns. They are used in informal letter because we are very intimate with the person whom we are writing the letter. And that's why it is informal letter. So there is no need of being formal. So formal language is avoided. But in formal letter, we can't afford to be chatty, conversational. We have to be formal. We have to be neutral. We, we need to be objective. Okay. So chatty style is not allowed. 
Now, how can we become very intimate? Here, we have to keep in mind the five kinds of sentences. Assertive sentence, imperative sentence, interrogative sentence, optative and exclamatory. In informal letter, we can use all kinds of sentences. If we are using varieties of sentences, then this letter becomes very interesting. When we say assertive sentence, that means normal sentence with S, B, O pattern. Okay. When imperative, it begins with verb, go there, come here, that is imperative. When we are using optative, it begins with may, that is wishes, may, may I come in, may you grant me leave, well that is optative, exclamatory, using interjections, alas, I am ruined, bravo, you have done well. So exclamatory sentences, all these sentences are used in informal letter because it requires variety. But in formal letter, we avoid exclamatory sentences. We avoid optative sentences. At times, imperative may be used, but very rarely, mostly it is assertive sentences, that is normal sentences. There is also a convention regarding the use of voice. In informal letter, we mostly use active voice. But in formal letter, mostly it is passive voice, only occasionally active voice is used. So this style has to be kept in mind while writing a letter. We also need to be very careful regarding the use of punctuation marks. Whether there will be comma after sa, comma after yours faithfully, or there will be no comma. There are two kinds of opinion regarding the use of comma, as far as letter writing is concerned. One group claims that there is no need of using punctuation mark. But another group says no punctuation mark has to be used. According to one group, well, no need to write comma after two, comma after every line of address, comma after dear sir or dear friend or whatever you have written, again, comma after yours affectionately, yours sincerely, no comma needed. Another group of experts, they claim, no, comma has to be used. If you are using comma, you have to use comma after every item of address. Again, after salutation, you have to use comma. You have to use comma even after closing compliment. You can follow any of this style, but you have to be careful that you are consistent with the style you are using. Either use no comma, or use comma after every item, that means with regards to address, every item of address, salutation and closing compliment. I will show you some samples. Let's look at a sample later, that is informal later. You will find how the address is written there, how the date is written there, how salutation has been written there, and the body of the letter is there, closing compliment is there, and how the name has been written. And this format, you see that it uses left-right combination. There could be another version as well. And if you are uh, not using left-right combination, everything can be pushed to the left-hand uh, left side. This is the sample of formal letter and how some other items have been 
incorporated here. For example, the address of the receiver, su uh, subject, and everything has been indicated by arrow. Once you become familiar with the format of the letter and the language of the letter, we need to know how to write different varieties of letters. With regards to the personal letter, I have just told you that we have to be very intimate, we have to be chatty, we have to be personal and this can be possible when you are giving every detail, every minute detail. So, a personal letter can be very lengthy, no problem. You can write two pages, three pages, four pages because the person whom you are writing is very intimate to you and he is interested in what is happening around you, happening with you. So, he has the time, he has the patience to go through your letters. And with regards to the language that I have told you, we have to use variety of languages, mostly exclamatory sentences, interjections, optative sentences, brevo, kudos, all these ex expressions have to be used. But when it comes to formal letter, okay, we have to be formal in a style. And here, we have to keep in mind one more thing that is the length of the letter. Formal letter should be brief and pointed. It cannot be as lengthy as your informal letter, personal letter, letter to your friend or your relative. Because the person there has no time to go through a lengthy letter. So, a formal letter has to be pointed and very brief, as brief as possible. Mostly, we divide the body of a formal letter in two to three paragraphs. The first paragraph is the introductory paragraph and it states the purpose of the letter. Okay. Here, uh, the writer of the letter may introduce himself or herself. But name of writer is not needed, just the introduction. Example, I am an inhabitant of XYZ village or block. So write the name of your village, whatever village you come from. Or I am a student of XYZ school. I am the secretary of the literary club of your school, etc. This kind of introduction can be given in the first paragraph if it is a formal letter. In a letter, placing order, state why you choose that pro, uh, particular dealer or seller. For example, your name has been recommended as a supplier of quality products or your prices are the best with a sizable discount, etc. In a complaint letter about a recently bought product and if that product is not functioning properly, you need to describe the product, also mention the brand's name, model, size, bill number, date of purchase, etc. This has to be given in the introductory paragraph. Depending on the nature of the letter, the second paragraph can be written in various ways. If it is a complaint letter, nature of complaint and inconvenience caused due to it is to be mentioned. If you are placing order, then details of the order needs, uh, need to be given. If it is letter to the editor, you need to point what you wish to highlight, why you are writing the letter. You can also give opinions you wish to register on a particular issue. 
if it is an inquiry letter, you may ask specific questions or queries you wish to be answered. The third paragraph, which may be the concluding paragraph of a formal letter, while writing this paragraph, keep in mind certain points. In this paragraph, you need to state clearly what you require. If it is a complaint letter, state clearly what you wish to be done with the product. I mean, you want it to be repaired or you want it to be replaced. If the complaint is about certain services, you need to clearly mention your suggestions for improvement. In letters to the editor, you need to mention your opinions and suggestions very clearly. In letters for placing orders, here you need to mention very clearly where, when and how the goods are to be delivered. Again, if you are asking for information, you need to specify how you want the queries to be answered. For example, please answer via email at the following mail address. Or, I am enclosing a self-addressed envelope for your reply. So these are some of the important tips that you need to keep in mind while writing a letter or while helping your students write a letter. Let's recap what we have done today. We discussed that letter writing is a higher form of writing. It is taught in schools for the development of expression, creativity, and communicative ability. A letter has a very specific communicative purpose and it does not require the elaboration of points as an essay requires. We also talked about two broad categories of letters, informal and formal. We talked about the specific format with regards to informal letter and formal letter. Which format is to be followed while writing an informal letter or while writing a formal letter? Then we also talked about specific style or language. What kind of language has to be used? Which kind of sentences are preferred in which form of letter? Which style is to be used in which letter? For example, a personal letter can be chatty, can be very intimate, can be conversational, can be colloquial. But a formal letter has to be very formal in diction as well as in terms of structure. We need to be careful also about the length of the letter. A, a personal letter or informal letter can be as lengthy as you wish to write. There is no restriction on the length of a personal letter or informal letter. But if you are writing a formal letter, then you have to be very careful that it is pointed and very brief, brief as far as possible. This is all for today. We shall meet in another session on another topic. Till then, goodbye.